So uh, tonight I'm going to show you our mouse colony setups. We breed food for our snakes and supplemental food for our tarantulas and other guys. Uh, it's pretty simple. We were actually given these containers so we didn't make it so we can't really show you a construction but it's really simple. It's just a standard Rubbermaid tub. Not too deep otherwise you have trouble reaching the water. Just cut a section out. These are riveted on but if you didn't have something like that, you could easily punch a hole of the right size, slip a bolt through, put a locking nut on there, exactly the same. Just cut a little hole for the water dish so it can hang. As you can see, if the container is too tall, they won't be able to reach it. Uh, we've experimented with our males and females. We found the optimum number is one male and two females. Otherwise, we found we had more cannibalism. We're not really sure whether it was that they just burned through their food too quickly and uh, resorted to cannibalism or whether it was stress due to overpopulation. Just usually give them a piece of egg carton or a uh, drink tray. Plenty of food. This one only has one female at the moment. We had to uh, euthanize the other one because she was sick. She had some kind of weird tumors and her back legs weren't working properly. Uh, for the food, we recommend kind of going with a pellet. That way they're not picking out one sole food item. They're getting everything all at once and it lets them dull down their teeth. We went for this stuff. It's meant for mice in colonies so it's good. It's cheap. It was about 40 bucks for a big bag so last us a while. Just standard pine shavings are cheap. Just stay away from any sear. You don't need that kind of oil. This batch we have here, they're sort of in between fuzzy and hopper. They're starting to move around. They're the perfect size for a young male corn, so we'll be doing a few of them tonight. Uh, we'll be showing you our gas chamber for that. We also have a rearing chamber for the ones that we're bringing up to an adult size. We didn't have a uh, other rubber made, so we just made one out of a, just a standard clever latch. It's a little too humid in there, needs a few more holes. It's sort of an experimentation thing. And we're just growing them up. This one's Monty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in this next video, I just want to let anyone know that we will be killing some mice. This is considered a humane way of doing it in Canada. This is using CO2 gas. It's painless. It's just simple suffocation. They knock out, then they die. But just letting you know that they will be dying, just in case anybody is uncomfortable with that. Okay, this is our gas chamber. Uh, this was also given to us by a friend. Uh, it's pretty simple to make, though. Just need the only intense parts are the uh, regulator, the valve. The best place, place to look for one of these would be your local propane place. A hardware store may or may not carry it. You don't want the uh, container to be airtight. It needs to be uh, able to vent some air, but you do want a relatively snug fit. Otherwise, you'll lose all your gas too. our CO2 tank. Uh, probably won't be able to buy one of these yourself. You'll have to look into renting. Again, go to your local propane place. That's where we got ours. Just a uh, simple screw on. And carbon dioxide is a pretty small gas, so you want to make sure it's on really tight, otherwise you'll have leaks. Always do this in a well-ventilated area. We've got our window cracked, our fans are on. <laughs> Finnegan, say hi! That's Finnegan. Continuing on. Not that little diversion. If you ever feel yourself lightheaded during this, stop, remove yourself to fresh air. It's pretty simple. It's carbon dioxide. It's not going to kill you unless you're like sleeping with it. Hey, okay. got this hooked up tight. Have your tank closed. Our regular has a second valve here to control the flow down the tube and a gauge. Make sure you're reading the right gauge. 
this one has two gauges, it's argon and carbon dioxide, they happen to be the same, but if your, uh, if your gauge had other gases on there, they may not be the same uh, PSI. We start off at 10, so I'll just open it and allow some to flow in. We keep it at 10 until the mice pass out, and then once they pass out and they stop moving around, we up it to a full 20 until they stop breathing entirely. When they die, you can tell because they release their bowels. Okay, this is the setup. We uh, put a towel down to help soak up any of the urine that inevitably comes out. We don't want to always have to be cleaning this thing every time. Um, well, might as well just get started. Put the lid on, snap it closed, open the tank. You don't have to open it all the way, just as long as you get to 10. And you start. And it takes a minute. If you're doing uh, pinkies, pinkies tend to have a uh, very high resistance to suffocation because they're constantly being laid on top of by their mother and their siblings. Typically with pinkies, we'll use cervical dislocation. It involves uh, placing a hard, blunt object at the base of the shoulder blades, kind of in between them, on the cervical vertebrae, and uh, grabbing the tail giving a solid, quick pull up and back, back and up. This time, rather than wait for them to pass out, I increased the concentration as soon as they started heavily panting, and it dropped them much quicker, which in, I think is a m more uh, painless way to go. As you can see, they're all dead. It only took about five, maybe ten minutes. No movement, lifeless. And now they're ready to be packed up and frozen.